Tulad ng sabi sa title, pag-usapan natin ng ilang tipid tips sa construction. Now on this video, I will be talking about more tips on how you can save on your construction cost when it comes to designing your dream house, your business establishment, or your building. This is actually part 3 of a previous video I uploaded on this channel. Go and check out those videos which I would link down on the descriptions below. So tara, let's do this! Disclaimer, these tips are from my experiences in this field. You don't need to apply these tips if your situation doesn't call for it. Tip number one, flatland is the best. We all know that lots or ang lote can be either flat or nakaangulo or nakaslope. Isa sa mga medyo magastos gawan ng structural design ay ang lote na nakaslope or yung hindi flat. Okay lang kung minimal lang ang slope niya pero hanggat maaari siguraduhin na ang loteng balak yung bilhin ay flat. Pwedeng malubak-lubak ng konti, mabato, or matigas, basta hindi siya masyadong nakatagilid. Kasi kapag ang lote mo ay nakaslope or nakatilt sa gilid ng bangin, it would take more structural supports to hold it into place para hindi ito mahulog o dumulas. The more structural supports, the more cement, steel, and other materials will be needed in order to have it sturdy enough to hold the elements. Tandaan ang Pilipinas ay prone sa malalakas na bagyo at lindol. Kaya naman, when purchasing a lot, try to choose lots that are relatively flat. Tip number two, use modern materials. I know, this can be considered as expensive at first, pero I'm telling you now that this will save you a lot of repairs in the future. Good quality and modern materials are the thing of the future. Kung mapapansin nyo, madami ng bagong materials na available sa market. For interior wall panels, ilan sa mga ito ay fiber cement boards, MDF boards, and gypsum boards. These materials can be used to provide your house with interior wall partitions that are oftentimes called as drywalls. Anong advantage nito at paano ka makakatipid dahil dito? In comparison to the typical CHB walls we often see inside our homes, drywalls are easier and faster to install. These materials also have smooth surfaces, making it easier to finish as well. In other words, dahil sa method of installation ng mga boards na ito, malaki ang matitipid mo sa labor cost pagdating sa pagtatayo ng mga interior wall partitions sa loob ng bahay mo. Malamang sa loob, interior nga eh. At dahil smooth or flat agad ang surfaces nito, konti na lang ang kailangang pakinisin para mag-smoothin ito lalo at pwede mo na itong pinturahan agad. Matatandaan na on my other tipid tips video, I mentioned that labor costs oftentimes are at 60 to 50% of the entire construction cost. Kaya naman malaking bagay na mapabilis o mapadali ang labor sa construction and finishing works. Another advantage of these modern materials is that it is already fire resistant. It is durable and insect resistant. So hindi ka na masyadong mangangamba sa mga anay in the future. At mas malinis itong tingnan. Hindi ka tulad ng karaniwang plywood na bukod sa prone ito sa anay ay matag itong i-finish or pinturahan dahil sa mga wood grains and pores nito na natural property naman talaga ng kahoy. So makakatulong ka na sa kalikasan, makakatipid ka pa sa labor cost at maayos ng tingnan ang mga pader sa loob ng inyong bahay. Disclaimer, this material would require a good carpenter or drywall installer to be able to make sure that this would really look awesome. There are certain specific uses for these boards I mentioned. I will just do a separate video regarding the specific uses of these materials. Tip number 3. Lessen the corners. Dahil nasa tema na din tayo ng pagtitipid sa labor cost, isa sa mga posibleng makatipid sa oras ng trabaho ay ang bawasan ang mga kanto ng bahay. Ibig sabihin, sa design ng inyong bahay, bawasan ninyo ang mga unnecessary corners, lines, and curves. Bukod kasi sa dagdag ito sa installation time sa assembly, dagdag din ito sa oras ng pag-finish or pagpipintura. Mas madaming kanto, mas matagal gawin. And this goes for all the design elements included in your house. This goes for the walls on both the interiors and the exteriors, the ceiling, the floor, and even sa bubong, the roof. The more corners your roof has, the more complicated the installation of it becomes. One of the most basic or simple roof designs is that of a gable roof, where you only have two sides sloping down. That's it. With this kind of roofing, pare-pareho ang design ng roof trusses mo. Roof trusses are those roof framing sections you see on a bare roof. Ito ay pinapa-fabricate pa at isasampas sa ibabaw bago ikabit ang bubong. Imagine if your roof has a complicated design. 
the parts of the roof trusses will be more time consuming to assemble compare it to a hip roof na kung saan may minimum na 4 sloping sides ang bubong at di hamak na mas madami itong corners kesa sa gable roof you can imagine the complicated roof framing parts that the workers have to assemble in order to complete this section of the house Again, the more complicated the design, the longer it takes to be installed. And the longer it takes for the installation, the more man hours it will incur. On my previous tipid tip video, I mentioned there that pure geometric lines are advantageous in cutting costs kasi nga, the simpler the method of installation, the better and the faster. Kaya naman, for my tip number 4, get skilled workers. For some of you who will acquire the services of a legit contractor, this may help in properly completing your house in the right amount of time. Getting a legit contractor may be a little more costly pero you can be assured that you're dealing with professionals who will complete your project as per design and as per contract and not to mention as per agreed timeline. All of these issues can be discussed with your contractor together with your architect to be able to plan the construction phase accordingly to lessen the hassle and to lessen the mistakes. Now, if you are on a tight budget at ang preferred mo ay kumuha ng arawan or pakyawan workers, my tip is this. Make sure that these workers were referred to you by someone who already experienced working with them. Para lang sure. Ngayon, kung hindi naman at talagang wala kang kakilala na may maire-refer na arawan or pakyawan workers, interviewin mo ng maayos ang mga makakausap mong workers. Parang job interview. In job interview naman talaga siya. Kung meron silang mga pictures ng mga dati nilang ginawa, huwag kang mahiyang tingnan ito. Kung kaya nga ng oras at lokasyon mo, bisitahin mo na ang mga dati nilang nagawa para sure ka na maayos talaga silang gumawa. Kasi wala naman talagang paraan para masigurado na maayos silang magtrabaho kundi ang mag-check at mag-double check. At kung di pa sapat, mag-triple check. Tandaan na ang perang gagasusin mo dito ay hindi biro. Kaya siguraduhin mo sa sarili mo na nagawa mo at na-check mo lahat bago ka makipag-deal sa mga kokontratahin mo. Hanggat maaari, always make a deal using a contract. Kung saan nakalagay ang mga designs na gagawin para alam nila ang mga susundan na walls, floors, ceiling, roofing, lahat. Make sure din na sa kontrata nakalagay ang napagkasundo ang budget at ang timeline or kung ilang araw or buwan ang kinakailangan para matapos ang project mo. Dapat nakalagay din dito ang halaga or ang amount na napagkasunduan. To help you on this process, get professionals or get an architect. Kasi sa architect nag-uumpisa ang architectural designs ng inyong bahay. Kaya nga tinawag yan na architectural design eh. Kasi si architect ang bahala dyan. Si architect din ang bahala mag-specify ng materials na swak sa iyong budget. Ipaplano at ide-design niya ito according sa mga requirements mo at sa mga professional suggestions niya. Maaari mo ding i-request kay architect na mag-provide ng initial estimates for reference. After nito, pwede nyo na itong ipa-estimate or ipabid sa mga general contractors para may idea ka na din sa maaaring amount of construction ng iyong dream house or business. Pwede nyo din naman ipabid ito sa higit sa isang general contractor para makapili din kayo ng contractor na pasok sa budget at requirements mo. Kaya huwag matakot na kumuha ng professionals. Architect, paano naman namin malalaman kung legit ang contractor? Legit contractors usually have a company profile and portfolio of works. Dito nakalagay ang kanilang mga previous or current projects na hinahawakan. Legit companies have their business registrations listed on their company profiles. Required and proud sila na ilagay ito sa kanilang company profile. Maging mabusisi na lang sa pag-counter check at sa pag-double check. And that's it. Comment down below if you have any questions or reactions and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and you may also share this video to your friends. And if you want to know more about architectural tips, advice, lessons, and know-how, you may also subscribe to this channel. At idami mo na din ang notification bell icon to keep you updated on my latest posts. Again, I'm Carlo and do watch out for more future videos kasi sa channel na ito, May future. I want to send my shout out to Mr. Romel Suarez. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. To Mrs. Heidi Chong De Luna from your husband Larry De Luna, I wish you two the best. Shout out to Van Chorus. I hope I pronounced that right. Shout out to Angeline Manlapas and her YouTube channel. Shout out to an aspiring and promising YouTuber slash civil engineer, Engineer Ortiz. Check out his YouTube channel, The Daily Dose of Construction. 
Shout out also to Pong's work in his YouTube channel which is mostly about glass and aluminum fabrication works. Shout out to Ken's Art Life and his YouTube channel all about art and other stuff. And lastly, shout out to Javin's Artisans and their YouTube channel all about empowering Filipino youth through protecting built heritage. This is actually... Like you can... All of these things... Kung kaya nga ng oras at sitwasyon, pwede nyo din naman... <clears throat> awesome.